Frontier Town, the saga of the Roaring West. Frontier Town. El Paso, Cheyenne, Calgary, Tombstone. Frontier Town. Here is the adventurous story of the early West, the tamed and the untamed, from the Pecos to Powder River, Dodge City to Poker Flat. These are the towns they fought to live in and lived to fight for, teeming crucibles of pioneer freedom. Frontier Town! If you ever happen to be in the frontier town called Dos Rios, well, here and now you've got an invitation to look me up. My office is over Cherokee O'Bannon's Dos Rios livery stables, and I'm Chad Remington, frontier lawyer. Now, don't go misunderstanding my invitation. I'm not aiming to say that when you're in Dos Rios, or even on the frontier itself, you're going to need a lawyer. But being a lawyer, and a frontier lawyer at that, I'm certainly equipped to tell you a yarn or two to pass your time waiting between stagecoaches. Now, of course, they say that a good salesman always shows his samples. So here's a sample of a yarn and an adventure which I'm only too happy to spin for you. Now, it all started when a brazen and cold-blooded gang of road agents, under the whiplash of a gun slammer known as Pecos Rowley, waited until Wells Fargo had carried a large shipment of gold into town. And then they swooped down, guns blazing. Stand the door! Don't let him get away! Stand the door! Cherokee, come on! Up this way with me! Hey, just keep riding, Chad. I'm right behind you. Counselor, I'm not objecting to being in this posse, but I'm not a mountain goat. Where are we going? Back into these hills, Cherokee, until we find them or lose their trail. Now stop drawing and keep that horse moving. Come on. It was only a 50-50 chance cutting off that way back through the crags. And instead of finding Pecos Raleigh and his crew, we lost their trail. But there was enough evidence of which way they went. So, when upon returning to town, I found that Wells Fargo had posted a $5,000 reward, I euchred Cherokee into packing a bedroll, and both of us set off through the narrow confines of Steamboat Pass, heading for the broad, sweeping valley we called the Green Hills Country. Chad, I think this whole thing is a lot of nonsense. And a wild goose chase. That doesn't sound like you at all, O'Bannon. $5,000 would buy a lot of things, <laughs> including the one thing you like best, and the counter irritants to cure your hangover after. Ah, bosh, piffle, and fiddlesticks. Besides, with a bloodthirsty killer like Pecos, what's him a caller? An excursion of this nature is fraught with danger. With danger? Yes, with danger. How do you know where he's hidden now? Where he might be? Why, any moment riding along here, he might spot us over the sights of his rifles and... Down! Down, Chad! We've been discovered by that polecat! <laughs> that polecat you're talking about, Cherokee, doesn't seem to be any more than a pole kitten. Here, you see him over there? About ten years old and not even ankle high to a prairie dog. Well, by the bear, the top of the prophet. An adolescent ape like that has no business packing a gun. Hey, you! You, youngster! Come on over here. Come on, you pint-sized imperial pass. Shake it up! I'm coming. What's your hurry, Tenderfoot? Tenderfoot? Why, you sawed-off son of Satan's stepchild? I've got a good mind... Hold it, Cherokee. To... Here comes someone riding up. Maybe this is his father. Over here, mister. You go and snitch on me and I'll bust you both one. Oh, boy. Ho, oh, ho, oh, boy. Yeah. Something wrong here? I heard a shot and... Well, I'll be dogged and branded... 
Chad Remington. Ike, Ike Davis. Now, what in name of all that's sacred are you doing out here in Green Hills country? Last I heard of you, you had a place over in San Juan Basin. Been over here for most two years now, Chad. See, you ain't changed none, uh, Cherokee. A moment ago, I was almost changed. This rambunctious, rowdy little runt almost blew my head right off my shoulders. I did not. <laughs> and with that purple nose for a target, I don't see how even a child could miss. Oh, but seriously now, a Winchester 3030 is nothing for a youngster this age to play with, Ike. I know, Chad. And believe me, he wasn't playing. What? You have the audacity to stand there and defend this immature imp? Moreover, you're starting to sound as if you were his father, which, uh, beg your pardon, we know you're not. Well, I don't blame you for not knowing, Cherokee, but I am Mickey's father. His father? <laughs> now, wait a minute, Ike. If you're trying to pull my leg, it doesn't stretch that far. I've known you for 15 years. And this youngster must be at least 10, and up to two years ago, you weren't married. That's right, Chad. But if you ride over to my place, you can just see the roof of it through those trees. I've got a lot to talk to you about, and a lot to explain. Now, wait a minute, Ike. You'll have to go a little more slowly. Now, uh, tell me that last part just once more, uh, about how you got married. Well, I thought by moving to the Green Hills country, I might do better than I did over in the San Juan Basin. But with no money and not being able to hire much help, things got worse instead of better. Uh-huh. So, being able to do most of the outside work myself, what I needed was a woman to look up the house and the little chores. Well, to make a long story short, I... I run an ad in one of them matrimonial magazines. You mean that you actually advertise for a wife? I did, and I got one. And I must say that Nellie's a fine girl. Fine girl. Oh, then this young hoodlum is her son, is that it? Uh, Mickey? Oh, he really isn't so bad. The trouble is, this is the first time he's ever been out in the country. You see, the man Nellie was married to before was an Easterner. came from Brooklyn. Well, that certainly explains a lot, except for one thing. Just how is it you let a ten-year-old youngster pack a rifle? Well, to tell the truth, in the last couple of days we've been looting food out of our cellar. We don't know how or who's been stealing it, but it's got so bad that unless we put a stop to it, we're going to be going hungry ourselves pretty soon. Well, I'd certainly be careful with a youngster who's new to the West handling a gun. And now, Ike, I... Uh... I'd like very much to meet your wife. Oh, Nellie will be in pretty soon. She's out in the barn doing the milking. You see, uh, I run a few head of cattle, but trying to do it all myself, even with the little help I get from Mickey, it can't amount to much. For instance, right now, I should be bringing in the hay for the winter feed. Well, if Cherokee and I can be of any help while we're over here, we'd be only too happy to give you a hand. Ah, oh, Chad, in the first place, you forget what we're over here for. And in the second place, when I bend my elbow, I'm not in the habit of bending it with a pitchfork. <laughs> well, a little bit of honest work won't do a bit of... Uh... Oh, come on in, Nellie. I want you to meet two of my old friends from Dos Rios. Well, any friends of Ike's are certainly friends of mine, I always say. Chad Remington and Cherokee O'Bannon, my wife, Nellie. <laughs> How do you do? Well, I'm very pleased to make your acquaintance, I'm sure, likewise. Uh, uh, Nellie, Chad and Cherokee are going to stay here for a few days and help us get in the hay. Well, that's certainly nice of them. When Mickey was a little baby, we spent a two weeks vacation down at Bensonhurst. That's on Long Island. And I was surprised to see how everybody went out of their way to help their neighbors. Well, it's the same way out here, Mrs. Davis. Except that if we Westerners didn't help one another, we wouldn't have much of a West. Oh, ain't that the truth. Except we got some neighbors now who keep helping themselves to our food without us knowing anything about it. Neighbors? Yeah, that's what I was telling you about. Of course, we don't know who it is, but if we ever find them, they ain't gonna have a hide full of buckshot. A Cherokee, to get the hand done, we'll split up into two teams. I'll work with Ike, and uh, you and Mickey can work on another rig. Mickey? Yes, what? Mickey. And the point I'm trying to make is this. While you're out haying, you keep your eyes open and your gun handy. If you can find who's been pilfering the food out of the Davis's cellar, there's the barest chance you may end up $5,000 richer. 
thanks to Wells Fargo. Of course, I mentioned the 5000 to get Cherokee to go to work, having no idea that the wide loop I was throwing might settle awfully close to the truth. Because Pecos Rowley and Lefty, one of his men, were hidden out not two miles from Ike Davis's little ranch. Well, Pecos, how about it? We sure could use some more food. All you seem to do while we're hiding out in this barn is to eat, eat. Nothing but eat. Yeah, I know, Lefty. And with every sheriff between Dos Rios and Denver looking for us, I don't dare show my face for a while. And just hanging around makes me nervous. And hungry. Well, it's a good thing this deserted place is just a couple of miles from that Davis ranch or we'd be eating twigs and grasshoppers. How about it? You want to ride over there and sneak into their cellar again? Yeah, but I sure don't like walking them two miles over there, them two miles back, loaded down. Well, why can't we take the horses? Yeah, and have someone spot us? Nothing doing. And while the hay in that field is up to our shoulders and we can walk through it without being seen. Come on, I'm getting hungry again. Let's go. What's the matter, Cherokee? <laughs> Pitching hay too much for you? Uh, well, no, Mickey, but I just thought that if we'd stop now here for a few minutes, I could give you a lesson or two on how to shoot that rifle. Are you kidding? I bet you you couldn't hit the broad side of the Flatbush Avenue car barn. Oh, I can't, eh? Here, give me that Winchester and I'll show you. Now, the first thing to do is to hold the rifle lightly. Don't pull the trigger. Squeeze it slowly like this. <laughs> now, pick a target the other side of the hayfield and show you how to aim. Blazes tossed that shot, Pickett. Hey, you see over there? Huh? Some Jasper with a rifle and a little kid. Well... Pickett, you think they spotted us? Uh, not to where them last two shots went, but I'm sure gonna find out. Come on. What's going on here, anyhow? If you'd keep your lip buttoned up, maybe we can find out. Mm -hmm. Cherokee, I think you're afraid of guns. Afraid of guns? Why, listen, my urban urchin, you know the reason why Chad and I are up here in the Grass Hills country? Why, we're up here to capture one of the worst crooks in the entire West, Pecos Rowley. Why, that big mouth lefty. Oh, you leave that gun alone. Uh, we ain't doing no shooting out here. Because I just got an idea that's going to take care of both of them and give us money to burn. Come on, we're going back to the hideout and start this thing working. We'll return to the second act of Canyon of Wanted Men, our exciting frontier town adventure in just a few moments. And now, Frontier Town. Of course, to spin this yarn, I'm putting the cart before the horse in some places. That is, I'm telling you now what Pecos Rowley and Lefty were doing, although at the time neither Cherokee nor I nor the three Davises had any idea, not alone that they were in the neighborhood, but that they had spotted Mickey and Cherokee. Well... So I don't get the chronology too confused before we go back to the Davis Ranch. Let's find out just what it is Pecos had in mind when he said that running across Cherokee and Mickey was going to mean money in the bank to him. I don't know, Pecos. Maybe I am stupid, but I still don't see what you're driving at about that kid we seen in the hayfield. Look, you heard what he said, didn't you, while we were walking up toward him? Yeah, but... He said something about Coney Island, didn't he? 
Sure, sure. Coney Island's back east somewhere, huh? Uh, New York, ain't it? That's right. New York. So? So, a kid that age who knows about Coney Island must come from New York. Must come from New York? How do you know? By putting two and two together, that's how. Ain't you heard? Some of these ranchers out here are taking eastern dudes in for boarders. Like they do at hotels. Well, what if he does come from Coney Island? It certainly was no reason for not ventilating them and that red-nosed monkey with them. What's the matter? You got friends in Coney Island or something? No, you knothead. I ain't got friends in Coney Island. But if you'd ever stop to think, maybe you'd see what I mean. If the kid is a dude who's out here boarding at the Davis Ranch, what does that mean? Yeah, never mind, I'll tell you. It means his old man or his mother has to have a hat full of dinero, that's what. Rich Easterners. Okay, okay, so they're rich Easterners. What's that to us? What's it to us? Oh, nothing. Nothing more than $50,000. Don't you see? We go over to the Davis Ranch tonight, sneak into the kid's room and grab him. Yeah? Then we leave a note that tells them if they want to get the kid back, it's going to cost them 50000 of Uncle Sammy's nice new frog skins. Now do you get it? Say, you got a real good idea there, Pickers. Real good. Only, what happens if they don't pay us the 50000 Or if they ain't got that much? Then you can do what I stopped you from doing this afternoon. You can get out that gun you're so anxious to use and shoot the brat full of nice little round holes. <laughs> Mickey, Mama doesn't want to tell you again. It's time for you to go to bed. Mama, give me a chance to finish, will you? I haven't told you how Cherokee threw two four-bit pieces. Oh, those are half dollars, Ma. He threw them right up into the air. And before they hit the ground, bang, bang, he put holes in both of them. Well, I must say that's mighty good shooting, Cherokee. <laughs> it was nothing at all, nothing really. <laughs> It would have been an easier story to believe if Cherokee had thrown Chinese yen up into the air. They got holes in them already. Yeah, but they got square holes. And there's nothing square about good old Cherokee. Well, Cherokee looks as if you've made yourself a conquest. Mickey seems to think you're quite a hero. I sure do. He captured Billy the Kid single-handed. And Cherokee's promised to teach me how to ride a horse. I mean, ride one good. He owns a livery stable. <laughs> Then, Mickey, you better look out that he doesn't sell you a couple of bottles of his genuine Cherokee Indian rattlesnake oil along with it. All right, Mickey, you've heard your story. Now it's time for you to go to bed already. Oh, look, Ma, I got a keen idea. If you'd let me go riding with Cherokee tonight so he could really teach me how to ride a horse, then by tomorrow, I bet you I'd be able to help you with the chores around here. Ride down and bring in the cows, I mean. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me a bit if it could help by tomorrow. All right, Ike. What do you think? You're Mickey's father, too, you know. Oh, let him go. An hour isn't going to make much difference. <laughs> and knowing that Cherokee found that pint bottle I had hidden in the kitchen, <laughs> it might keep Cherokee out of trouble, too. What's up, Pegas? What's the matter? Look, will you? We're playing in luck. Ain't that the kid and the fellow we seen him with this afternoon riding toward us? Yeah. Looks that way. Now wait till they're almost on top of us. Here they come, boss. Okay, Lefty. Now start throwing some lead around their ears. All right! Hold it! You don't want to get blasted clean out of your saddles. You're smart, mister. You leave that gun right in its holster. Oh, what's going on here? What is this? Oh, nothing. We're just taking you and this kid for a little ride. Go on. You lay a hand on me and I'll slap your ears off. Well, you better do as he says, Mickey. Why don't you do something? I thought you were the guy who captured Billy the Kid. Well, well, I, I was. This doesn't happen to be Billy the Kid. You said it. And if you're interested to know just who it is, my name's Pecos Rowley. Uh-oh. 
think he'd fainted and fell right off his horse. Oh, now, believe me, Mrs. Davis, I, I'd give my right arm if I knew what happened to Cherokee and Mickey. No, Chad, you've got to do something. You've got to. Now, now, don't go to blaming Chad, Nelly. Oh, I'm as much at fault as anybody, I guess. But I think with your help, I maybe we can find him. Oh, Chad, you mean... You mean you know what happened to him? Well, uh, about a mile from here, I found tracks where two horses had stopped. And I also found some empty shells. Tarnation thunder, Chad. You, you mean there's been a shooting? I don't know what I mean yet, Ike. Except that the hoof tracks seem to lead past the fence at the south of your hayfield and over through those aspens. Through the aspens? But Ike told me there was nothing over there except an old shack and a barn that are deserted. Deserted and uh, some folks say haunted. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, now, look, ma'am. you got to pull yourself together. Uh, you'd better go into the kitchen and fix yourself a cup of strong coffee. Ike, uh, go strap a gun on and get yourself a horse. We got some trailing to do, and I'm afraid that this time, every second counts. Ch Cherokee, you got to get us out of here. This bond's spooky. What do you think I am, a magician? I've got so many ropes tied around me now, I feel like a Vienna sausage. Chimney, Cherokee... What are we going to do? Well, Mickey, I wish I could give you the answer. Say, have you noticed? The boards in this loft we're standing on are rotten. If we're lucky enough, maybe I can bust them through like this. Cherokee, I, I think I hear someone coming. All right, come on, Lefty. Bring a lamp so the kid can see the sign that note I wrote for him. Ah, right, you low-down, good-for-nothing thieving crook. What are you back for now? I just wrote a note I want this brat to sign so we can collect some money from his mother. Lefty, you climb up to that. Huh? What's that? That's me getting loose. That's what it is. Mickey, look out. Lefty, he's busting through the floorboards. Mickey, Mickey, run for it. Hey, quick, Lefty. Grab that kid. Let go of me. Let go. Let go of me. Oh, you you concerned, Brad. Now I got you. Well, thought you'd give us the slip, did you? Well, we blame near did. Yeah, you blame near did. But so you blame near don't do it again, I'm going to put you someplace you'll never get out of. A six-foot hole. Ah, oh, go on. You, you wouldn't dare shoot Cherokee. Well, if you've got any ideas on how to stop Mickey, speak up now or forever hold your peace. All right, you. You got any last words? <laughs> you know, something they can put on your headstone? Why, if I told you all the last words I have, I'd be here till uh, the week from next January, you pusillanimous, pasty-faced polecat. All right. That's the last thing you're going to say on this earth. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Chad, Chad, look out. They both got guns. Yeah, they both better use them. Ike, you grab the little one quick. Come on, Pop. Go help you. Come on, Pop. Yeah. All right, you hold him, Chad, and I'll slug him. Well, Mickey, and you too, Cherokee. I don't know how you did it, how you found them, but this was good work. This varmint is Pecos Rowley. Yes, I... oh! Chimney Christmas! Cherokee's gone and fainted again! <laughs> Nelly, without a doubt, it's the finest vegetable soup I've ever eaten. In fact, I'd say this soup will grow more hair on a man than my rattlesnake oil. Of course, on the wrong places. Yeah, if you think this is good, Cherokee, you ought to taste a soup Nelly makes called clam chowder. Coney Island clam chowder. 
But you don't have clams out here of Erstis. And they're too expensive for folks like us to buy anyways. Yeah. My mom's a swell cook. Well, with Pecos' trial coming up at the end of this week, you'll be getting your share of the Wells Fargo reward money. And that ought to buy you a lot of things that you need. Jumped up John Thomas Chad. No such thing. That reward belongs to you in Cherokee, not me. Oh, no, maybe not to you, Ike. But Mickey is certainly entitled to his share. Oh, shucks, Chad. I didn't do nothing. Oh, the tickets you didn't. Well, you bit that horrible-looking lefty on his gun arm so he couldn't use it. As a matter of fact, I think you saved my life. Well, if that's true, Cherokee, maybe you ought to give Mickey your share of the Wells Fargo reward, too. Oh, no, I should say not. I wouldn't hear of it. <laughs> Nellie, it uh, might prove to be a very good thing for Cherokee. Anytime he gets his hands on money... He throws it away over the nearest bar. Ah, but not this time, Counselor. This time I put my money in the savings bank. Oh, so? <laughs> and but, why the change of heart? Well, he gave me a little pocket bank to save my nickels and dimes in. It has a quotation on it. It says, giant oaks some little acorns grow. Yes. <laughs> so being a man who is interested in any kind of corn that can age an oak, I figure I ought to end up owning a distillery. <laughs> <laughs> Frontier Town, starring Reed Hadley and featuring Wade Crosby, is a Bruce Ells production. Story and direction by Paul Franklin. Music written and played by Ivan Dittmars. Be sure to be with us again, same time next week, for another fine action-adventure story with your favorite young Western star, Reed Hadley. And now this is Bill Foreman telling you that Frontier Town comes to you from Hollywood. <laughs>